Good evening. Today we will be discussing on the axillary brachial plexus block. General principles of nerve blocks. First, we should do a full anesthetic assessment, which includes history examination and investigations, and obtain a valid consent. Indications for nerve blocks includes to avoid general anesthesia due to poor health, post-op nausea vomiting or desire for early discharge from hospital, early return to normal diet, especially in diabetic patients, for post-operative analgesia, which allows effective physiotherapy, improvement of blood supply to the surgical area, and early immobilization of operative area such as tendon repair. Contraindications for nerve blocks includes absolute and relative contraindications. Absolute contraindications are patient refusal, infection over needle puncture site, and local anesthetic allergy. Relative contraindications include coagulopathy, general sepsis for neuraxial block, uncooperative patients, and peripheral neuropathy. Performance of the block Full resuscitation facilities must be available and full monitoring according to AAGBI standards. Available personnel should include anesthetist, assistant, and a person to provide emotional support to the patient. Equipments needed includes the ultrasound, resuscitation drugs including intralipid, nerve stimulator, insulated short bevel needle, oxygen supply, local anesthetics and additives. Calculate the required dose and do not exceed maximum local anesthetic dose, etc. Confirm consent and site or site of the block, sedation with midazolam and fentanyl, aseptic technique, don hat, mask, gown and gloves, prepare the skin with 0.5% chlorhexidine in 70% alcohol and wait until the skin is dry and drip. Analgesia includes fentanyl and subcutaneous injection of 1% lidocaine at the point of needle insertion. Techniques includes the ultrasound-guided technique with or without nerve stimulator and landmark technique with nerve stimulator. Avoid intraneural injection to reduce the risk of nerve trauma. Using ultrasound guidance, reposition the needle if contractions occur at less than 0.2 mA during nerve stimulation. Impulse duration should be 0.1 millisecond, set at 1 to 2 milliamps initially. As the needle approaches the likely site of injection, decrease down to 0.3 to 0.5 milliamps. At this stimulus, the needle tip will be 1 to 2 millimeters from the nerve. Reposition the needle if opening injection pressure is more than 15 psi. Avoid excessive needle passes or injections. Use short bevel needles. Ballers observe and reposition needle. Intraoperative measures. Test for sensory and or motor block prior to inflation of tonique and surgical incision. Full monitoring as with general anesthesia. Beware of local anesthetic toxicity. Separate the patient from the surgical site with a screen. Use appropriate sedation. Check patient regularly for pain or discomfort. Always be prepared to convert to GA or abandon surgery should local anesthesia fails. Post-operative care includes protection of the operative site from injury such as using an arm sling for a limb with residual motor or sensory blockade, adequate preloading with analgesia, provide information to the patient on the timing of return of sensation and motor function, provide contact information to the patient for any queries that the patient might have. Patients with complications that may be due to nerve blocks should be reviewed by appropriate specialists. Axillary Brachial Plexus Block Indications includes anesthesia or analgesia for hand surgery, arm surgery, or any procedure above or below the elbow. Advantages of the axillary block There is much fewer complications compared to other approaches. It is suitable for patients with severe respiratory disease. It avoids the risks of pneumothorax and phrenic nerve block. It is suitable for patients with mild coagulopathy. The puncture site is easily compressible should vessel puncture occurs. Disadvantages of the axillary block. In patients who are unable to abduct or externally rotate the shoulder, access for the axillary block will be impeded. 
puncture of the axillary artery. Hematoma formation and compressive nerve injury can occur. Risk of intravascular injection and LA toxicity. Nerve damage occurs in 1.2% of patients and it usually resolves. It is likely caused by malposition of the anesthetized limb or failure to recognize a compartment syndrome postoperatively. The axillary block does not block the axillary nerve nor the intercostal brachial nerve. The axillary nerve is not blocked unless large volumes of LA are used. The intercostal brachial nerve arises from the T2 and T3 and supplies the skin of the posterior upper arm. The patients may be unable to tolerate an arterial tonique if the intercostal brachial nerve is not blocked. The axillary block does not provide dense analgesia of the upper arm. LA spread occurs better in the nerves longitudinally rather than circumferentially due to septae within parts of the plexus. Landmark technique Patient position The patient should be supine, the shoulder abducted to 90 degrees and externally rotated, the elbow flexed to 90 degrees, hyperabduction may abolish the arterial pulsation. Follow the general measures as detailed above. Axillary artery is palpated high in the axilla and fixed between the index and middle finger. Needle insertion. A short beveled 50mm 22 gauge stimulating needle should be used. The advancing needle is directed at an angle of about 45 degrees to the skin as far proximally as possible. This often means injecting at the lateral border of the pectoralis major. To block the median nerve, insert the needle immediately above the axillary artery. Look for median nerve stimulation, finger and wrist flexion at 0.3 to 0.5 mA. Insert to a depth no more than 1 to 2 cm. After careful aspiration, inject 15 ml of LA in 5 ml helicots. To block the musculocutaneous nerve, withdraw the needle, angle slightly superiorly and advance deeper into the coracobrachialis. Look for bicep contraction at 0.3 to 0.5 mA. After careful aspiration, inject 6 ml of LA. To block the radial nerve, redirect the needle underneath and slightly posterior to the axillary artery. Look for wrist and finger extension at 0.3 to 0.5 mA. Triceps contraction alone should not be accepted. This may lead to inadequate block. After careful aspiration, inject 15 ml of LA in 5 ml aliquot. To block the ulna nerve, direct the needle inferior and superficial to the axillary artery. Look for finger flexion and ulna flexion of the wrist at 0.3 to 0.5 mA. Ulna nerve block is usually attained by spread of LA from the radial or median nerve injections and there may not be a need to block the ulna nerve separately. The intercostal brachial nerve and the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm nerve block is done to reduce tonique pain. Technique Subcutaneous infiltration of LA across the width of the proximal arm. Disadvantage Tonique pain is multifactorial and predominantly influenced by muscle ischemia and blocking these cutaneous nerves may not curb tonique pain. Ultrasound technique Patient position The patient should be supine, shoulder abducted to 90 degrees and externally rotated, elbows flexed to 90 degrees. Ultrasound settings A high frequency more than 10 MHz linear probe set at the depth of 2 to 3 cm with a transverse orientation in the axilla parallel to the axillary crease. The needle should be 50 mm of choice. Scan findings The axillary artery is seen as a pulsatile, anechoic, circular structure and confirm its presence with Doppler color flow. Multiple axillary veins may be seen these are easily compressed by the probe. 
the conjoined tendon of the latissimus dorsi and the teres major. It is a wedge-shaped structure and inserts into the humerus. It is deep to the plexus and the artery at the inferior medial side. The radial, median and ulna nerves are hypoechoic round oval shaped structures around the axillary artery. The ulna nerve at the 12 to 2 o'clock position moves more inferiorly, medially and runs superficially down the cubital tunnel at the elbow. The median nerve is at the 9 to 12 o'clock position and it is superior and lateral to the artery. It passes from the lateral to the medial side and usually crosses superficially where it sits in the anticubital fossa. It can pass deep to the artery. The musculocutaneous nerve is bright hyperechoic flattened structure within the coracobrachialis. It then passes between the coracobrachialis and the biceps muscle. This nerve innervates a substantial part of the radial side of the forearm. The radial nerve lies superficial to the conjoined tendon of the latissimus dorsi and the teres major at the 5 o'clock position. It descends deep towards the humerus and it is accompanied by the profunda brachii artery distally. Follow the general measures as detailed. Use an in-plane approach from the superior aspect. A 50mm 22 gauge needle is advanced in line with the ultrasound beam. 5 to 10 mL of LA deposited around each nerve to achieve good circumferential spread. Nerve stimulation may be used. Choice of LA includes lidocaine 1.5% with adrenaline 1 in 200,000, ropivocaine or levobupivocaine 0.5%. Dense and complete blockade can often be achieved within 10 to 15 minutes. These are my references. Thank you.